Remember we said this was the master equation of chemical thermodynamics. Let's apply this to phase equilibrium. And in fact, we did that. So we said that if you just have uh, two components, in this case, it's a single pure substance, but the two components are the components in two different phases. This means that the chemical potential of that pure substance in phase one is equal to the chemical potential in phase two when you have phase equilibrium at constant temperature and pressure. Also note that at phase equilibrium, delta G is delta H minus T delta S. So at equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. And this equilibrium we're looking at is phase equilibrium. This implies that delta S is just equal to delta H over T. Now to make that a little more concrete, let's take a phase transition. Now let's just take water and we're going to say start that liquid and we're going to have H2O in the gas phase and we're going to be in the phase diagram along one of those lines so this will be in phase equilibrium. So for at phase equilibrium when you have two phases coexisting for water at one atmosphere that would be zero Celsius for example this could be one atmosphere and zero degrees C where ice melts or freezes and in those conditions there you have an equilibrium. The chemical potential of water in the liquid phase is equal to the chemical potential of water in the gas phase. That's thermodynamically what we mean by phase equilibrium. The chemical potential of the substance in the two phases is equal at phase equilibrium. And then for, remember I'll just draw the phase diagram here, we have pressure and temperature. So we have something like this. So what we're on along one of these lines, these phase equilibrium lines, under, under one of those lines, on one of those lines, we have to have the chemical potential of the two phases equal. So for example, if this is a solid, this is liquid, and this is gas, here along the liquid gas, so say any point along here, we have to have phase equilibrium. I guess what I said before, sorry, liquid to gas, <laughs> duh. So rather than re-record this lecture, just let me say that there should be 100 degrees C, duh, <laughs> liquid gas. All right, so right up here at one atmosphere and at 100 degrees C, at that point, we're right there along that phase boundary. And along the phase boundary, in fact, any place along the phase boundary, this one or that one or that one, we have to the chemical potential of liquid, or of one phase, equal the chemical potential of the other phase. That's what we mean by this slide. Now let's talk about the Clapeyron equation. This is not the guitarist, Eric Clapeyron. In fact, um, it's spelled differently. So this is actually a guy who lived back in the uh, 1800s, a dead white European male. He developed this equation here at phase equilibrium dp dt is the change in the partial molar entropy in going from one phase to another divided by the change in volume, partial molar volume, in going from one phase to another. What does dp dt mean? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to refer again to the phase diagram, pressure temperature. dp dt is the slope of a pressure temperature diagram. So at any particular point here, you can use a Clapeyron equation to figure out what the slope is. And just let's show that. What we're going to do, let's say, start from some generic substance A1 in one phase, and that's going to be in equilibrium with the substance in the second phase. So 1 and 2 here represent the two phases. We know when there's phase equilibrium, the chemical potential in phase 1 of this substance is equal to the chemical potential in phase 2 of that substance. We only have one substance, so I don't need to label these as A. We also know from the, the equivalent of the master equation for chemical thermodynamics that in phase one, d mu in phase one is the partial molar entropy of phase one times dt plus the partial molar volume in phase one times dp. And you can write a similar equation for phase two this is the, at equilibrium, we're going to equate these two, minus the partial molar entropy 
in phase two times dt plus the partial molar volume in phase two times dp. And now we're going to equate these two so that if you take an infinitesimal amount going this way, the change in chemical potential, d mu one, is the same as the infinitesimal amount if you go the other way. In other words, at phase equilibrium. So in other words, d mu one is equal to d mu two. All right, so we can equate these two. Let's do that on the next page here. So that we have minus S one in one phase, dt, plus the partial molar volume times dp in phase one. That's equal to minus S in phase two, plus the partial molar volume in phase two times, all right, I forgot the dt there, dp. All right, let's collect terms. Let's put the dt terms over here. So put that dt term over there and put that one over there and collect terms so that we have dt. And let's make this uh, S2 minus S1. All right, so there's the partial molar entropy in phase two minus that in phase one. That's equal to, and here's the dp terms. We put them over here. There's a partial molar volume in phase two minus the partial molar volume in phase one. Or another way to write that, take that below here. Let's define this as delta S. So this is a change in the partial molar entropy when you go from phase two to phase one, or sorry, phase one to phase two, final minus initial. And this will define or give a symbol delta V with a bar across it. And that's the final V2 minus V1, phase two minus phase one. So we divide this here and we get how pressure changes with temperature along a phase line in the phase diagram is just the change in partial molar entropy when you go from one phase to the other divided by the change in partial molar volume as you go from one phase to another. And that is the Clapeyron equation. Again, that comes from, we have phase equilibrium means chemical potential of the two is the same. We say what chemical potential is in terms of partial molar quantities and presto we have the Clapeyron equation. But wait, there's more. Here's the delta S, but we know at the phase transition, remember we said before, at the phase transition, delta S is delta H over T. All right, so let's go ahead and redo this, putting in a delta H instead of the delta S. But the phase transition, let's see, we have dP dt, we said was by the Clapeyron equation, delta S partial molar, delta V partial molar. But we said that delta S is at the phase equilibrium, delta H divided by T, and this is delta V. So let's just integrate both of these. The integral of dP, we'll put the dT over there. That's equal to the integral of delta H over delta V, one over T dT. I'm going to integrate this from initial to final. Let's go temperature one to temperature two. What we have is delta P. We assume delta H and delta V independent of temperature. And of course, we really should be putting partial molar quantities here. Forgot those. So delta P, we can pull those out of the integral. Delta H over delta V, natural log of T2 over T1. That's where that comes from. So if you want to know how the pressure changes, all right, so this delta P is how the pressure changes. Now let's go back to the phase diagram. So here's volume, of uh, this is temperature and pressure. So here's some line in there. So if we want to know a delta P, delta P going from say T1 to T2, we can use this equation, use the enthalpy for the phase transition, divide by the volume, partial molar volume change to calculate, and then multiply that to the logarithm of the final minus initial to calculate, if we change the temperature, how much the pressure changes.